Welcome back to March or Die Podcast. I am the Stress Master. And I am the Tumor. Not because I'm malignant, but because I march spot B9. And you know what's Not interesting? Together. I was thinking about that the other day. The only spots I, I marched, I think, was B10, B4, and then B1. Yeah. Those are I the marched, three spots uh, I marched. So my first year, I was uh, uh, U6. Oh, euphonium. Euphonium my first year. Mm. I weighed I weighed about 102 pounds soaking wet, marching a K-70 euphonium. I'm sorry. Those things were beasts. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, I marched, uh, I marched U6, I marched B9, and I marched B2. That's that right. That's right. All right, this is episode seven. I'm doing it in reverse because it's going to look correct. Seven. Seven. Um, yeah. So thank you guys for joining us. We have some news. Not a lot of news today. Um, we are going to be... Um, watching a cool christmas themed show um that he has no idea what it is and then we have a special announcement we're going to be making at the end this is going to be probably a shorter podcast um and we are going to be taking two weeks off from now um so the 23rd and then the following 30th we're going to be taking off just so we don't get killed by our sub our, our significant others um we, we we say it's going to be a shorter podcast we say this every week it never is. Well, this week might be because we have less news, less stuff to talk about, but we're still going to eat. And I've got to, and I've got to take my wife out to dinner in about an hour and a half because it is actually eight hours ahead from you here. That's so. right. Okay, so let's get started. And now the news, which is a bit of a tough call at this time of the year because it's December and it's hard to find anything interesting to talk about. However, we will certainly try. So first things first, Seattle Cascades have announced their show title for 2024. And that show title is Sky Above. Uh, we have no idea what's in it because all we have is this great picture. Um, looks somewhat nautical and, and uh, nocturnal. So uh, can't wait to see what it is. However, what I will say about Seattle, though, is that... Uh, no matter what it is, it's probably going to be entertaining. It's probably going to be a pleasure to watch. Uh, it's going to be colorful uh, because that seems to be what this core is about. And I like it. I, I'm digging it. I liked their show last year. I was really glad to see them back. DCI needs cores like Seattle. They, Yes, we need vanguards and we need them, but we need we need Seattle's. We need, you know, we need uh, your south winds and stuff like that. So uh, it was really, really good to have them back. It was. Uh, and next... And, and I wanted to chime in real quick. One of the cool things I think that this new um, version of the Cascades are doing is they're going more into um, integrating into the education system there. So they're like getting more involved with the bands there and stuff like that, which is going to help with recruiting. It's going to help with their their overall goal, which is education, which is something similar to what Phantom just announced. Phantom is yep. part of the Rockford School um system there in terms of education music so that's kind of and cool. also and also look i've been harsh on them but uh, uh i will give credit where credit's to santa clara vanguard's done the same as well uh with uh one of the local districts in the south bay so uh uh and, and you know what it's just smart business to do that as well because man you yeah. get it with the schools guess what you've got rehearsal facilities so and then you got band directors on your side things. And it's one of the hardest things to come by in this activity. It's just somewhere to actually do the activity. And next up in the news, uh, Phantom Regiment has announced that uh, their conducting, conductor, Carrie McCourt, has returned for the 2024 season. She's a fantastic conductor. I love watching Phantom's conductors. The, the, you know what? The core could be absolute hot garbage. Never is. But their conductors are always just spot on. Uh, I can't think of the last time that I watched a Phantom Regiment conductor and I would thought, man, that, they can conduct the hell out of that show. And you always know where the downbeat is. You always <laughs> know where the downbeat is. Yes, you do. <laughs> we didn't have that luxury for, all the time. <laughs> for, for, for those that marched in a certain corps in Northern California in the early 90s, the downbeat was often a mystery to us. The drum major was particularly showy, but finding the downbeat was was a bit of a mystery to us. So really good to see Carrie McCourt back. Um, next up, Cavaliers have announced their brass staff. Uh, so their brass staff is being headed up by Cheryl Lee, 
with assistant caption heads Tom Dean and Randy Greenwell. Oh, and wow. I think this is pretty necessary because you know what? I think that, relatively speaking, because you, you you look at cores these days and what, what we consider weak would have, let's be honest, Justin, would have won DCI back in our day. You know? Yeah. But I think... I think that that that, that the, the the brass caption is really the caption that was probably lacking for that core last year. You know, uh, they marched well. Their percussion was otherworldly. You know, but uh, yeah, so good to see that there. Uh, also, not listed currently on the uh, the DCI page, like we like we alluded to earlier. There's been a couple of cores, Phantom Regiment and Vanguard, have announced uh, partnerships with local school districts. And um, I'm kind of scraping the barrel now because it's December. Yeah, um, I was so, trying to think if there's any other news that I could think of. I mean, you, you guys can. I'm going to put this, of course, up on uh, our description here. But uh, I've, I've got I've got a couple a couple others real quick. Um, Santa Clara Vanguard has extended their auditions uh, for brass to or their video audition submissions. Uh, for brass till the 10th of December. So if you were thinking about it, why not do it? We're glad to have Santa Clara back. Uh, and also, uh, Colombians. Oh. I think, I think Colombians, man, I think this is a really up and coming core. They blew me away last year. I'd barely heard of this core. I mean, I've obviously had heard of the Colombians, but. I couldn't. I couldn't have thought of a show that made me made me sit up and take notice. But they certainly did last year. Uh, they are uh, probably one of the later cores as far as brass auditions. So you've got to the twenty uh, first of January for them. So again, if you're thinking about marching, don't think about it. Do it. Get your audition out. You know, even if you do a video audition to Vanguard or you do a video audition to Colombians, and you don't make the spot, you're at least going to get some feedback. You're going to find out what you need to work on. So yeah, I mean, and I'm gonna give you guys a little story here, a little little story. Um, story time with Justin. So, so my very first year, nineteen gather around the campfire, gather children. Gather around the campfire. So my very first year, nineteen eighty nine, was a train wreck for me. It was just a train wreck. Um, my personal life, I was just a, I was a dweeb. I was just an idiot, a moron. Um, all those adjectives you want to use for someone that was, you know, a teenager and stupid. That was me. Um, but anyway. So that year, I got cut twice. Twice. I didn't know that. I got cut twice from the freelancers because somebody came back from the previous year, but then he left. So I got the spot back. I did not know that. Yes. Yes. And then I got cut again. Did I get cut again? Maybe it was just once I got cut. But anyway, so just the, the, the moral of the story is don't give up. I, I, kept, I kept coming back. I went back to the rehearsal anyway. And luckily, the person that came left, and then I had the spot back. And then, of course, I marched, you know, a total of five years after that. Um, my final year... So what, you were say so what you're saying is you were basically just hung around like a bad smell until we had to take you. Pretty much. And it worked. Worked out, didn't it? <laughs> it worked out. And, I mean... It I, worked out. And it's kind of, kind of like me in 87, you know, when uh, uh, my first year with freelancers. Like I said, I weighed about 102 pounds soaking wet playing euphonium. I couldn't even hold the horn, let alone play a note. You know, I didn't come from a from a big high school band background. My high school band had about thirty five kids in it. And we were awful. I mean, it, it, we were we were the the stereotypical this one time at band camp band. You know, yeah. Um, and I mean, I barely struggled to play a note. I struggled with uh, the transition from trombone to a G bugle. I'd never played anything with valves before, you know, and then factor in the fact that I couldn't even hold the damn horn up. And I tried giving up. I tried quitting. I, I probably quit five times and the core actually wouldn't let me specifically, uh, 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 one or two people on staff. One of those we alluded to in our George Singali video, uh, Carl Sarf. Uh, and then another one, a chap called, uh, Michael Grogan, who we've maybe mentioned once or twice here. Uh, both had those arm around the moment, uh, arm around the, the shoulder moments with me, you know. Um, and yeah, I ended up marching six years. So, um, so yeah, don't give up, man. Yeah, Try, you just, you just never know, man. You never know, especially if, if you're like under, if you're like 15, 16, 17, 
um, you have a lot of life choices that you don't have to make yet. <laughs> so march why you don't have responsibility. March why you don't have to work and have a job. I mean, you do have to be able to pay for tour fee, don't get me wrong. But when you get older, you start having a lot more responsibilities. It becomes much, much harder to march. So you have a small window. Take advantage of that. I, I highly advise you to um, experience different cores too. If you want to go march a, a specific core, try it. And if you don't make it this year, march another core, get the experience, then go to the core you really want to march at. And it's just the way the ecosystem works, right? So something I told my my daughters is you've got a long time of adulting and you're dead of you're dead a very long time. I know that sounds a little bit morbid, but it's true. You do. You got a long you got a long time of adulting. We're only here for a short time in the grand scheme of things, and you're dead a long time. So don't wait. Exactly. Don't wait. Oh, before we move on, I wanted to bring up our sweaters because oh. we didn't really talk about this when we started the video. So uh, your cheers and beers. Is there anything else on your sweater there that uh, is important? Well, there's there's beer bottles. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. There's there's Christmas trees. There's some reindeers. I'm standing. Mainly, right this is. Mainly, this is the only... So, in, America, in the UK, we call these Christmas jumpers, by the way. It is just a sweater. Um, but it's so hot. I can't even begin to tell you how hot it is. But I'm going to be a trooper, and I'm going to blast through this podcast, and I am not taking this off. I might lose <laughs> I might lose 10 pounds in sweat, but I am not taking this damn thing off. Yes, and I found this beauty, and I was like, I have to get this, because this is the ultimate Star Wars ugly Christmas sweater. I've never seen one before or since, so I grabbed it because I have a saying, if you see it, buy it. Because if you don't, you won't be able to buy it again. It just won't mm. be there. Unfor unfortunately, I have a, because Christmas jumpers, as they call them here, are quite a thing here. So I actually have a little bit of a collection of these. And this is actually the only one that I have that isn't horribly offensive. And that seems about right for Baritone. Hmm. All right. Okay, so we're going to jump into the next part, which is my gift to you. Um, I do want you to close your eyes, though, until I can get it all set up on the screen, because I don't want you to see what this show is, because you'll know it right, where, right away when you see it. So give me a second. All right. Such a great show, dude. One of the best shows not to win. And I don't think it should have. We're going to debate that, my friend. Whoops. I think that it was a very well-deserved second place. Well, that may be a versus show that we're going to have to do, my friend. It should be. such a build dude the first three minutes of this show is just, like, just ah! it's just dude. cranking it it's those contras The hip pivot from hell is coming up here as well. Look about half that pit marched freelancers in '85. Oh, really? What's that low brass, dude? Holy crap. Mm. Their conches were uh, ungodly loud that year. Listen to that.
Kommt. I know, dude, my god. Helps that they very, very rarely left the 50 yard line. Well, you see the stage right in front. Now we did it back then. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there are still on Mylar heads the uh, snares this year. Yeah, I mean, just the insanity of that first three minutes was just... <laughs> Listen to that. I know you didn't get... I know you didn't get to experience a Madison crowd until later on in your time marching, but... Man, those mid-80s Madison Finals crowds were just ungodly loud. And those toes. Sorry the video's lagging. I think it's because I'm putting it off my, uh, my backup drive, but the audience won't see it Stop. lagging. One of my best friend's cousins was in the Scarred. Marched um, Freelancers in 85, but then he marched here in 87, 88. Great guard, man. Look at the drill design, so cool. Freaking bass drums, dude. Back then, <laughs> you can't speak now. different colored drumsticks as well for your drum feature. Oh, Florida that's right. orange comes to mind. Yep, so you can see the sticks. You can see the heights. Oh, this is my favorite ballad, dude. Oh, so oh good. it's just, it's, it's a beautiful transition of, of mood as well. And his tone was beautiful. Great job, man. I, th 
think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this was the first year Vanguard had boys in their garden. It may be. It, they only had, um... I'll tell the story afterwards, but... They had 87, 88, and then no, no, no guys in 89. Love the guard uniforms as well. It's it's reflective of the core, but in a very feminine way. I don't know if that came across right or not. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. A softer version of the core proper uniform. And the colors, I mean, the, it's like the iridescence and stuff like that. Really, the, I like the blue. To, I, it's because it's the Ice King, right? Isn't it the Ice King? Yeah, or the, Ice King, yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. And he's wearing the same colors. Oh my god, here we go. <laughs> Love this part. It's the ice cream man. <laughs> Get me something strawberry chocolate or vanilla. Get me something strawberry chocolate or vanilla. Here we go. Ah, oh, they cut out to one of my favorite drill sets of that year. Oh my gosh, so good. You know who the Snow King is, don't you? No. He's the second drum major. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. I love this part. Just the tonality of the brass singing here. In the bells and stuff. The So good. If you weren't there, then you cannot imagine how loud the crowd is right there. I keep a list of my top five shows of all times and cores drop in and out of that list all the time. There's only two cores that have never dropped out of my top five all time drum core shows lists. Number one is that show. And number two, believe it or not, it's 92 Crossman. Hmm. The other three spots, peep cores have come and gone. But even though I don't think that show should have won, yes, perhaps a, a subject for another day, um, it is still one of my favorite all-time drum core shows ever. And it's one of those shows, I listened to it, so I had my eyes closed, and I heard literally the first two seconds of the crowd before the show, and I instantly knew who it was. I've listened to this show that many times. <laughs> so, 
Well, and it's hard to believe when you, it's hard to believe when you watch that video. Do you think that all the age outs on that field are pushing sixty now? It's true. <laughs> no, they'd be no, 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 they'd be fifty fifty four. Fifty four. Wait, wait, is that right? Yes. No. Wait, no. Eighty seven was thirty six years ago. Oh, 57. Yeah, they're all pushing 60, man. Whoa, dude. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm 52, so... I mean, this goes back to what we were saying at the beginning of the episode, though. It happens before you know it, man. I watch it in my head. I'm 53, and in my head, I still feel like I'm 18, 19 years old. You know, it happens fast, man. So exactly. if, you're on the, if you're on the fence about marching, just get off the fence. Yeah, do it. Don't don't even don't even second and if guess you don't yourself. Make, and if you don't make Vanguard because you tried out for Vanguard, you know what? Don't let that stop you marching somewhere else. Yeah, because you're going to get a good experience. I mean, it, it's I'm just it, using Vanguard as an example. Yeah, but I mean, I I, I got to keep telling people this. I mean, Drum Corps wasn't horrible in the '80s or '90s. It was but awesome, it, but it wasn't the same as what it is now. The requirements are now are much different, much stricter. There's a lot more oversight now than there was when we marched. So your it's experience a lot more competition is... for sp a lot more competition for spots as well. Yeah, you know, back when we back when we marched, California alone had uh, you had uh, Vanguard, Blue Devils, Freelancers, Blue Devils B, Blue Devils C, Vanguard Cadets, Mandarins. Velvet Knights, Mandarins, Anaheim Kingsmen. Um, uh, and th those are just ones I'm thinking of off the top of my head. And then you also had things like youth marching bands. Spirit of Sunnyvale was quite big back then, you know. Um, not too far away from us, just, you know, just up the coast, you had you had the Marauders, Oregon. you had the Seattle Cascades, Oregon, Oregon Crusaders. Yeah, so you had there was, and that's just in the West Coast, you know. And then you got into the Midwest and and, and the East, and I mean, hell, there was there was a chord practically every small town. You know, mm -hmm. so the opportunities for marching back then were a lot more prevalent. I mean, freelancers, for instance, I only mentioned that. I'm sorry to bore you guys, but it's it's just what I know. It's my experience. I don't think we ever, even in the years that we made finals, I don't think we ever set off on first tour without holes in the brass line and holes in the drum line. You yeah, know, agreed. Hell, hell. 87, we, we wrote the brass for 58 brass. We set off on first tour with less than 30. You know, that's just the way it was back then. So, so when you hear people, if you go on a drum core planet, look, I'm one of the mods there. I'm one of the admins there. And I am the first person to tell you that. And if you're one of these people and you're watching, this is directed at you. We have some really toxic old people on drum core planet. That's not all of us. Okay. And they're the ones that are tell you, oh, it was so much better back in the day because kids didn't have to. No, kids didn't have to because you know what? There were so many spots. Okay, you know, we we had the luxury of being able to take kids off the street and literally, you know, take take them and say, right, you look like you can hold a baritone. Here's how you make noise out of it. You know, of course, I mean, these days don't have that luxury because there aren't that many. There there aren't. I mean, there's still enough, but there. It'd be great if we had 200 cores again, but those days are gone. The ship has sailed. Exactly. And what's funny is is most of our soprano line were clarinet players, saxophone players. Yeah. Some were trumpets. Some were trumpets, don't get me wrong. But they learned. They learned how to play. We had saxophone players playing mellophone. Um, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what instrument you play. Because I know there's... And I've been looking on Reddit and the drum core, um, drum core Reddit page there. And some people are saying, I play clarinet. I want to learn how to play. Honestly, if you can play an instrument, the mechanics are the same. You got air, you got fingerings, and you just have different embouchure. That's it. <laughs> but you can learn how to but play. I, 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 but I think what you need to do, though, is if you want to march, march, but you also have to manage your expectations. What I mean yes. by that is if you're a clarinet player, don't don't expect that. I'm not saying this isn't going to happen, mind you, but, but don't just automatically expect that because I play a musical instrument that I'm going to go make the Blue Devils. You know what? You probably aren't. Okay, but there's nothing to stop you from. There's other cores that will take you and will teach you how to play that instrument. And if your goal is really that you desperately want to march the Blue Devils, well, go do it somewhere else, learn, and then go back and try again. Mm -hmm. You know, but the amount of times it, it just drives me. It, this is one of my bugbears, and I'm going to sound like an old man shouting from my lawn here for a second. And please, if I'm wrong, 
have a go at me in the comments section below. I want to hear from you, okay? But it's something that I do see from the current generation, what do they call them? Generation, is it Generation Z now or whatever? Gener whatever it is, yeah. It's, you know, they're all about instant gratification. And I do think there is some truth in that, you know? And maybe it's a product of of of, pe of being told that you know you're everything's good enough and and and, and that you know everybody gets a medal and all that. Um, please, if I'm wrong, have a go at me downstairs. And don't while you while you're having a pop at me downstairs. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Exactly, do that stuff because that's important. Did you, did you like how I got that in there, Justin? <laughs> I do. <laughs> It, and, and I'm getting to be a pro at this thing. And it's a common statistic. I, I've seen so many other YouTubers. Between 60 and 85% of people that watch videos do not subscribe to the channels. Even though you're watching the videos, you're not subscribing. What subscribing does, just so I can tell you, is it unlocks at different tiers for us, different tools and capabilities. So please make sure you subscribe. That way, also you get notified when you see a video of ours come up it'll come up immediately and then you can go watch it so thank you guys so much for joining us um we it do also have means when i get monetized and he can pay me a paycheck well it ain't gonna happen man <laughs> oh we haven't talked about that have we yeah we haven't <laughs> um oh but i did want to bring up that i do have a merchandise store and um i'm gonna probably put an overlay here but lots of different things i'm gonna be coming up with some new designs um for 2024 soon but please visit the merchandise store. It's going to be up somewhere here. It's going to be in the. It's always in the description of every one of our videos at the very beginning of the it's video. It's a really cool logo. It is a very cool logo. logo. Yeah. Well, you need to send that to me so I can get it on a shirt. <coughs> yeah, and then then I'll get it. Get you a shirt too, because you, you you haven't picked out your shirt yet. So, but I'm I gonna haven't. Be, no. But um. But anyway, that's one way you can help support this channel. Um, I, I guarantee 100% of the money that I'm going to make, which isn't going to be a lot, will be going back into this show because I don't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason for and, me and, to do and, it any and other my, way. And my pay demand. And it'll also go to my pay demands, but that's, you know, the whole. Yeah, you might get a case of beer now and again. That's about it. Cheers to beers. <laughs> All right, well, we have a special announcement. Go ahead. So, the second weekend of January, to coincide with their show announcement, the executive director of Spirit of Atlanta uh, will be joining us as a guest on this post on this podcast. Uh, we, both Justin and I, marched with uh, Jason, and uh, it's kind of like proud papas, if you will, seeing him move up the big, up the ladder. But yeah, no, he's going to be joining us in the uh, uh, second weekend in January, or second show in January. Um, and I'm led to believe that it might actually be that we're going to get that exclusive on the Spirit of Atlanta show reveal. Oh, can't wait. I have been such a Spirit of Atlanta fan um, since 1990. Um, somebody gave me a mixtape. I don't remember who it was. It was either 90 or 91. Somebody gave me a mixtape. I, oh, I could do a whole episode on Spirit of Atlanta. I know, but it, it's just so... but. 84 Spirit of Atlanta was on there, and I just fell in love with Spirit of Atlanta right from then on. Oh no, for Such me, a great for me, it's it's that 87 Spirit of Atlanta where they just 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 raunchy Southern Spirit of Atlanta with that with that trumpet or the sorry the soprano soloist from Hell in that show just <laughs> ripping the ass out of that show. It was a great <laughs> great show. But the thing I like about that chord, it is it is. I, Jason did have a little bit of a pop at me because we don't talk about him as much as we should and he's actually got a bit of a point so I did bribe him said we'll talk about Spirit of Atlanta if you come on as a guest and he said alright so uh, so we're holding you to that Jason by the way um, but yeah I mean they just talk about a core that's done a massive a, a wide variety of shows as well you know they've everybody thinks of them just for the you know for the the, the southern style they haven't been that Southern style in a long, long time, you know? Uh, what was it? They did Petrushka, I think it was, in 89? Yes. Um, Pretty God, those uniforms, so. were those uniforms were hideous. There's no two ways around it, but the show was great. And I think, and just trying something different. They had like something like 27,000 bass drums out on the field that year as well. Actually, I think it was 11, wasn't it? I don't even remember. I'll, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but no, I mean they, they've just they've done some really cool stuff. They've done straight up jazz. They've done straight up southern. They've done some really serious uh, symphonic pieces. 
Uh, last year, absolutely loved their show. Oh, I loved their show last year. I thought for sure they were on trajectory they, to make finals. Uh, but I, it was I, so I will, tough. I will, I will say it. I think they should have made finals. I think that the... There's a whole group uh, there, though. It's so good. Yeah. Civic Crest, Crossman, all those all those within that. Like There's like five cores, I think, that were all trying to get in. You know what? So. If we're talking about cleanliness, and please, Blue Knights people, don't kick my ass over this, okay? But well, Or feel free to. Just make sure you do so in the comments and like and subscribe while you're doing so. There you go. And ring the, and ring the bell. Ring the um, bell. Yeah. Ringing the bell is important. Um, yeah, no, I think that the right core probably got in from a cleanliness perspective. Did my favorite core of that group get in? No. No. Yeah. Uh, my, my, I, I would have I would have probably swapped out 11th and 12th and replaced them with uh, Spirit of Atlanta and Pacific Crest. Were they cleaner? Probably not. But they were just my personal favorites. I, I agree. I just like the shows. I, they I agree. They were just really entertaining. I agree. And um, if anybody from, from from Pacific Crest is watching, we'd love to have you on the show. Whether it's staff oh, or member, we'd love to have you on. We're we are j- we are both huge fans. Yes, love that show. And I I became a Pacific Crest fan when I lived down there. Um, and when they first came on the scene, I think it was ninety three. I think it was ninety three, ninety four, somewhere in there. But I was down there in ninety five, ninety six ish. And I remember seeing them in Diamond Bar all the time. Um, great organization. They've been around for a long time, doing really cool stuff, you know, kind of staying in their lane, doing their thing. So we'd love to have you on. Um, all right. I think that's all I got for this podcast. This is going to be one of our shorter podcasts. Can you believe it? You might not even actually, you might not even actually have to edit much for this one, you know? Uh, we'll see because we're, we're pushing some time here, but hopefully I won't. But thank you guys so much for joining us. This year has been fantastic. Thank you to Kanan for jumping on the podcast here. It's been a blast. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking me. I really enjoy it. Yeah, and we have a lot more to come. We're going to be doing a lot more cool stuff. As we get more show reveals, as we get more into the season, we're going to be doing a lot more things. We are going to be doing a versus battle, it sounds like. It's either going to be 87 or 2014. How, how about you guys vote down below? I'll put up a... I'll, actually, I'll put up a... Um, a um, what do you call that thing? A poll on the community page of some different years, and you guys get to pick which versus battle we're going to do next. So please participate. We always get low participation, so please participate. I'll also try to put a link in the description so you can jump right to the poll. But we want to do a cool versus battle for you guys. I hope you choose 2014. <laughs> That'd be a fun one for because... me to debate. <laughs> Because I, if nothing else, I'd like actually to demonstrate as well that we're not just a couple of old people that only know about 80s and 90s drum corps. We, 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 we really do appreciate uh, what cores are putting out now. So it would be great to have a, a reason to talk about them. So. All right. And also stay tuned because during this break, I'm going to start recording um, how to write drill. If you've ever been interested in how to write drill, I'm going to go from the beginning to the end. How do you analyze a score? How do you break down the score? How do you um, use Pi? I use Piware. Um, I'm on the older version though. I'm not going to spring, unfortunately, for the newer version because I don't write that much anymore. But I will show you how to use Piware, how to how to do the basics. Nothing really super difficult, but kind of show you how to. I'm going to do one song. Um, I'm not sure what song we're going to do yet, but it would be a great learning experience for you. And I hope you guys will join me for that. All right. Well, I have been the stress master. And I have been the tumor, and I'd like to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, or whatever it is that you celebrate. Uh, I'd like to wish you a a happy, whatever that is, uh, a happy new year and a uh, peaceful uh, 2024. And I really do appreciate all of you watching. So once again, if you have not subscribed, please do so. Give us a gift for 2023 of subscribing. Help us out. amazing. Yeah, and we would appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you on the next one. Um, please stay safe out there and we'll see you guys in 2024 but until then be sure to march on march on